It'd be nice to throw it open to you guys at home. And I don't know, Amy, if, if we have anybody on the phone who can, yeah, we've who got can loads shed the, of calls. The, other, the other half here, yeah? We're going to start with uh, Mel first. We'll start again on line three. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Mel. Morning, thank, thank you. Thanks for picking up the phone. What's your, what's your take on this? Well, um, I was in a relationship... Well, how we started, you know, met a guy, met a girl, we were flirting. So at the beginning, I had no idea. Um, but... Where I, I feel honoured that um, he, he did, I was the first one he told that he was gay, then we told our friends, and then we told his family. But why I stayed with him, and I was in love with him, I still am in a, in a way, because picture perfect, he was the cleanest male I've ever known. <laughs> he was, you know, immaculate in the home. Great interior oh, design oh, taste. Yeah. Yeah, I, oh, I really do want to go with it. But we never um, consummated our relationship right. like that. But I, I could secretly have my fun outside. Not that I was trying to deceive my partner. It's just that he couldn't deal with knowing. But he knew, if you see what I mean. I do. But I do. his preference was for me to... Again, well, because we go out, males were, would come up to me all the time. He'd want me to get males partners for him. So, because it was the same thing, this closet, um, he was acting homophobic. And because of that, the gay guys <coughs> knew, and they were like, oh, no, don't, don't hide him. Push him out of the wardrobe and let him come out. And, you know, but I was, I was concealing... Did, did Mel, did, did he come out in the end to, um, to everyone? Yes. Hence why we're not together. It took, it took six years. But where the reasoning came is when we were thinking about having a child. Well, he wanted to have children with me. And I thought, well, how are we going to do that? A ladle or a turkey baster? I just didn't know how we were going to... You wouldn't have been the first, Mel. You wouldn't well, have been the first. Well, yes, but it was just because at the time I was of no, no knowledge of how to deal with this. And, but I was totally in love with this person. Um, it, he could have told me other things, and I would still have been there with him. Do you know what, Mel? Ju ju just as Gary said, it, you can tell. You can tell as you speak about him. And I find that in a bizarre... In a, well, I, I just think that's a wonderful thing. I agree. It yeah. doesn't ma kind of matter <clears throat> what the circumstances are. It's the feelings that count. I think, I yeah. think it's a wonderful mm. thing. The emotion. Mel, yeah, thank you for the call, Mel. Let, let's have another. We've got a gentleman called Dennis on line four. Dennis, good morning. Good morning. Uh, what was your take on this? Uh, my story is that I was actually engaged to be married for three and a half years. Right. And uh, I left her for a man. And I'm now currently with my current partner for 16 years. And mm. on that subject, he has got a baby, done by the turkey baster. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't tell me you called him Bernard or Matthew. No. Right, right, right. Um, <laughs> thank you, Christopher. Um, what, 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 was, what was the relationship like with, with the woman, with your fiancé? It was a very good relationship. We were together three and a half years. She still writes to me from time to good. time. And, yeah, it was fine. I, I, in, in a way, I feel... It's, it's a bit strange, but for me personally, I feel I, I chose where I am. You know, I could have easily been with a woman, but I, I prefer to be with a guy. So, so you, 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 you could easily be with a woman, you prefer to be with a guy. Does that make you bisexual? I mean, I don't know whether these pigeonholes work. Because I've only ever been with one woman, so I don't know. <laughs> Is that Angela? Where, where, uh, <laughs> the pigeonhole thing. Sorry, yeah. Dave. I mean, the, the labels don't always work, so maybe... No, they it, don't always it's work. It's a waste of time trying to find one for this situation. Let's just Bisexuality the as a theme. Uh, are all are these people bisexual? Well, I think people are very uncomfortable with bisexuality and say, you know, some people believe we're all bisexual and we're all attracted to our same sex and opposite sex. I think whatever works for you, go with. Yeah. Um, you know, but I think it, it's who you fall in love with, who you have that connection with, who you have that bond with. That's the person you're in love with. And you know, you know who, you, who you love. And I think a lot of people do hide behind labels because it's safer to do so. And I think a lot of people feel they have to do the right thing, which is, which is the point of what we're talking about today, which is the bit that really worries me, doing the right thing to fit in with the culture, with the society, with the neighbours, with the PTA, whoever it is. And that's where the problems occur, because then when you bring children into that situation, you confuse them too. Well put. You did it, didn't you, Biggins? 
I did. I did. I got married because it seemed I was very innocent. I remember uh, I, when I left school, I joined Sal Salisbury Rep, and I was a student ASM, and I was propping, and I went back, uh, and it was a, a break in the rehearsals, and they, everybody was at the coffee bar, and there was an outrageous actor who I didn't realize was outrageous at the time, and I was there with my props, checking my list, and he shouted in this coffee room, brought the whole place to a standstill. I said, there's that Christopher Biggins. He's so queer, he's a lesbian. <laughs> and I didn't know any of what those words meant. I didn't know what queer meant. I didn't know what lesbian meant. It was just horrific. Everybody laughed, and I went bright red. And it, I was so innocent, and I just felt that then when I came to marry the person I married, it was the right thing to do, because that's what everybody in my family had done, everybody in the environment around me. It was me. the normal thing it was the to normal do. Thing. And we're back down to living a normal life Absolutely. Or that and I, thankfully, I came to... Uh, there she is. Yeah, thankfully, I came to terms with it shortly after that, and then I was the happiest I've ever been, because, you know, you're not hiding behind anything. And I do think... There is a lot of bisexuality around, and I'm not, you know, a lot of gay men say that, but I think there is a lot, and I think it's hidden, and I think it's uh, it's sad because but perhaps we're not all, you know, gay or straight no, at opposite ends of a spectrum. Levels. It's all different. It's like a different balance of hormones, yeah. almost, isn't it? Isn't it? Well, the, the new phrase is trisexual, isn't it? Well, everybody tries everything. Yeah, just yeah. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> which is very true. I think a lot of people do out there. Um, if we're if we're quick, we can get one more call in. I think. Yeah, yeah? let's go to then uh, Annette on line five. Annette, good morning. Morning, Annette. Hello. Hello, Annette. What, what's your story, then? Well, basically, um, I've been in quite an unhappy marriage. Um, m my husband, uh, as, it as he was, turned out to be uh, gay. How, how long were you married for before you found out? Um, I actually found out by accident, myself, um, and it had been nearly 30 years. Phew, OK. And uh, it was only because I found him out and he denied it, and it then proceeded to drag it through the courts, the divorce. You can't cite a divorce with someone who's having a similar same-sex relationship as adultery. That is the law. That is true. And that is so unfair. And it's not about his sexuality. It's the fact that he knew it was a very unhappy marriage. He knew why it was a very unhappy marriage, and I didn't. I believed in the sanctity of marriage. Uh, and, and, and have, you, have you had counselling anything like that? Yes. You have good. Yes, good. I have. Because it's—I um, mean—that is—I mean—that is a a big trauma after yes, thirty years. Yes. the best years of your life as a lie, and he went on having relationships throughout it. It came out in the end, and yet also put put in my life at risk. Oh, Annette. Yes. Annette, thank you for the call. Thank you for the call. I, I have to take a break now. Before we do, I just want to give the last word to Gary, actually. Um, anybody watching today, and I'm sure there will be lots of people watching today that may well be in the same situation that you were or other people you know, what would, what would you say? Basically, follow your heart. You know, um, like I say, I, I had lots of many years with Jackie and you know, lots of really happy memories and I'd do it again. Gary, You've got to follow your heart. Thank you so much for joining Thank us this morning. Really, hand on heart. I I, I, wonderful to hear your story. <laughs> wonderful to hear to your honesty as well, and Angela as well for, for shedding light and tears too. Uh, <laughs> give it up for our special <laughs> guest. Thank you so much. Now, <laughs> if you. If you or anyone you know is in a similar situation, needs help, there is a great organisation worth contacting called FLAG. It stands for Friends and Family of Lesbians and Gays. You can get them on 08456 520 311. 08456 520 311. There you go, the number's down there. Um, nice one, guys. Thank you. Uh, after the ads...